Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, streaming live from our studios in ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Teresa Wee, also known as the Walk in the Dock doctor. <laughs> walk, walk with a doc, doctor. Dr. Wee will be discussing moving forward after COVID-19 pandemic. What a heavy duty topic needs to be heard. And let's hear from Dr. Wee. Welcome, Dr. Wee. Hi, thank you, Wendy. Glad to be here. Yes, welcome. So Dr. Wee, tell us, where do you practice? So I practice here uh, for 38 years in Waipio Gentry. I'm in private practice. I, I do have two associates and uh, very happy to serve the community out here. Wow. I know everybody knows uh, your name. You're pr pretty much a household name. If you have a kid or if you were a kid, uh, you've probably seen them and know about their history uh, medically as well as personally, because that's just who you are. So um, let's just talk about what kind of uh, local and national speaking events have you presented at? Well, my passion is to really show families that it's possible to, to stay healthy, be healthy, and I've really been invited to maybe about four national presentations now. Um, the most recent being the um, Academy of Pediatrics and also just talking about the, the, the passion that I have to really reach out because we have a terrible pediatric obesity crisis. So I'm really trying to reach out and, and, and help as many families as I can. Wow. Yes, I remember. I mean, I think I was got, got to work with you a few times when I was a board of directors for the American Diabetes Association, mm -hmm. and you volunteered your time and your knowledge to just come alongside and uh, educate the families and the, the keiki, and you did a marvelous job because you just have a way with, with, with children with keiki. Mm -hmm. So I need to ask you, do you have any children? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I raised four children. Uh, well, working a, a full practice. I was in private practice with my first husband, Stephen Wee, and um, it wasn't easy. It, it was quite tough. So I really, I think this experience has really helped me understand what my working parents are going through and, and thus my interest in, in really using my experience and my medical knowledge to, to help working parents. Well, you know, everything in our lives is to prepare us for the next step. So yes, you having four of your own children gives you the opportunity to be a little bit more compassionate and mm -hmm. understanding, but yet understanding how simple or how difficult it could be to deliver the right things to our children, no matter how much we love them. Sometimes it's just some cakey or it, it, the relationships are just different in each case. I mean, with your patients, with your kids, we all know that. So I also know that your husband, Stephen, um, he, he left you and he's in heaven now. But the good thing is that I know you had a great relationship with him and your four lovely children and your grandchildren, but you are so blessed because you found true love again. So tell us a little bit about that and, and, and what your life is like now with your grandchildren and your family, your blended family, I should say. You know, my, my husband of 30 years, my business partner, Stephen We he was an internal medicine doctor and such a wonderful physician and leader in the community. He died suddenly and unexpectedly after 30 years of marriage. And really, I, I could have decided to quit medicine at that point. But at 56, I, I just felt that I still had a little bit more time. And I really do think that it's through the grace of God. I I decided to pick myself up and, you know, just take that first step to figuring out what would be my next move. And again, as I mentioned, I really was not looking for a husband. I think he just kind of dropped in front of me. Um, he had lost his wife and, and we eventually, you know, just started to date and we've been married. We're going to be married now for 10 years this August. Wow, you're yeah. truly blessed, you both are, that you found each other and that you're so compatible. I had the opportunity to meet with both of you and then hang out and I just can see the love that you have for each other and uh, in respect to your first partners, of course. 
but you know god blessed you both by bringing you together and having this great life that you can now enjoy as well as with the children and your grandchildren so wow and you know what girlfriend you're too young to even consider retiring at, even at 56 at that time that you yeah. woke up and you said you know what i'm just beginning and yeah. so with your passion and your knowledge and your desire to want more and better for everybody here in hawaii as well as abroad thank you so much for not throwing in the towel and for <laughs> just continuing your heart's desire so I know that you religiously love to exercise well, <laughs> because I know that because I know every Saturday morning you wake up on a Saturday morning to do a, 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 a adventure or project that you started out and joined up and it's called Walk with the Doc Oahu. And yes. you do it at the Central Oahu Recreational Park every Saturday morning. So I'm not sure what happened when COVID was around and I'm sure I'm going to ask you to share that with us. And my question would be, are you uh -huh. back up and walking in the park on Saturday mornings again? Yes, so we're back up. March 12th was our reopening date and we have been getting 30 to 40 people already. So I am trying to get the word out uh, to people of all ages and all fitness levels all across Oahu, you know, come on and join us. And we just have so much fun. It's from eight to 9 a.m. I have a new health tip every week. And I call it my walking family because we encourage one another. You're with like-minded people who, who just wanna be healthy. And we have such great fellowship. Yeah, um, I think it's the best thing. In fact, yesterday I was at Down to Earth and I was talking to them about your walk in the uh -huh. walk with a doc and um you were like wow really i said yeah there's um in central oahu they she does it every saturday from eight yeah. to nine i said you ought to go out and talk story with her because <laughs> maybe you guys can partner in some way because yeah. they're promoting exactly what you're trying to promote as well uh within their store and grounds and so i thought wow what a great partnership and it was just yesterday i was talking to the managers about that because yeah. we all got to work together to to encourage um, more people to take their health back and you walking in the park them preparing the food and the products what a great partnership i think that would be and i know that you provide uh, the last time i was there i know you gave me an orange so that was my breakfast after my and my reward for walking in the park with you and your friends and what a great way to do it because you're not just talking about you know the the the, the gossip but you're talking about health issues, how to make better health decisions for you and your family. That's so critical, Dr. Wee. And so I commend yeah. you for your commitment yeah. for doing this. I, for I think it's, it's really great. Um, I'm a pediatrician, but you know we can talk about health in general. And I think it's so great for physicians to be out there with the community, you know, just, just chit-chatting outside of the office. I think people really do appreciate it. And, you wouldn't believe every week it seems like people come up to me and with tears in their eyes telling me how much this program has changed their lives, how much it gave them that nudge to to really just get started and be accountable. And, you know, you've hit it in the park or out of the park, I should say, because, you know, out of the park or at the park, people are. Um, the guard is down but when we walk into an office we're like oh my gosh she's a professional i i, I want to ask her about my kid his nose is always running what do i do but i can't ask her that some parents they feel a little intimidated that way and in that uh, surrounding but in the park all guards are down and they just share with you and that's where really um the ministry happens i should say is in the park is that correct yes that is correct and you know, I think it helps to break that barrier. You know, the, the doctor has to work on her health and, you know, she's trying to get everyone to motivate her and, and she's motivating them. And it's it's one big community effort. And I have speakers, you know, physical therapists and neurologists and different guest speakers coming out. So I, I think it's good for the community to, to really interact with all these different um, allied health professionals. Oh, and what I'm hearing you say, uh, Dr. Wee, is that not only do the, the walkers and the patients, um, they, 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 they're blessed, but you said you yourself, the doctor needs to get out and talk to <laughs> others, and you in return 
are being blessed by their presence. So you see, guys, come on out, walk with the dog. We need to help and bless her as well as she blesses everyone else. It goes full circle. Is that right? Yes, that that is correct. I, <laughs> I think as as healthcare providers, we need to take care of ourselves so that we can care for our families and patients. So, you know, we need to recharge as well. Wow. So I know that keeps you busy. Plus, you have a uh, you know all your your grandchildren. You have a, yeah. a thriving practice. Uh, what other projects do you have planned for the near future, Doctor Wee? You know, I'm I, I'd like to go on a speaker's website. I'm preparing a speaker website, so I hope to reach out to outer islands as well as nationally. And you know, right now I'm also working with a bereavement um, book that will be coming out. Mm. Um, it's how art grieving through through the work of art so so that's going to be something i'll be promoting coming up soon and i think just just really reaching out to the community and talking to people about where they can start to to begin the healing process after we've gone through two years of covid pandemic right families are in chaos obesity um physical health and mental health is just just not in good shape and so i want to help families get back to a routine wow and that's so key and so needed you know uh that was my pet peeve even before covid you know just trying to deal with um, people going to heaven and and that's so critical and then when covid hit um we found more and more loved ones passing on and going to heaven even prematurely so you could not have hit that on the nail even at a better time as this um, to help us going through these different steps and processes, especially of the last two years. So, and I know when I met you, you were uh, wanting so badly to have those classes and you're asking me, if, where can we have these? Or where should I start? And, <laughs> and I know that for you and your family, you also were healing. And so you again, God put you in a place where he gave you something and he wanted you to turn that little, I don't want to call it a mess, but that situation, that little mess into your message. And so that's exactly what you, your call to action is. And that's why everything that happens in your life is for a reason. And you know what, um, how blessed you are because you're figuring it out that way. And so, and not, and not just figuring it out, but you're taking action. So good for you, Dr. Yeah. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the whole world is grieving. We're gr yes. grieving the loss of loved ones, but but also the loss of what we had missed out on. So yes. so I think this grieving is very very important, and we have to acknowledge it, and we need yes. to talk about it, not yes. sweep it under the rug. And that's the key. We need to talk about it, mm -hmm. you know. And that's that's part of the process, and and you know that is to be able to talk about it and share openly about it. And then from there, we start healing from the inside right. out. Yes. And that's so, so key. So yeah. um, I can't wait for that to uh, unravel. As you, of course, I, I didn't know that you wrote this book. In fact, there are two books that you wrote. And yeah. I want you to talk to us about the Happy Healthy Revolution and, and share a little bit about that. So the Happy Healthy Revolution um, summarizes my family obesity workshops. I you know, I really think that the key to solving pediatric obesity is including the entire family. So this first book was a uh, just a summary of what I actually talk about. And each chapter goes through, you know, the different workshop um, concepts. And so if you want to, if you're interested in, you know, just understanding where to begin, this would be a good start. And my two books are available on Amazon. So, you know, just, just go wow. over there. But we can just reach out and order it there. And yes. right. Do you carry it at your, at your clinic? I do. I, I sell it at my clinic as well. Okay. That's good to know, especially yes. the one that we're going to talk about next. And that's your book number two. And yes. it's entitled my COVID-19 diary. Boy, even if it was just two years, you must have so much written in those two years. So I know it talks about practical tips and scriptures for improbable times from an American doctor. So tell us a little bit about, about that book, number two. So when COVID started, I wanted to keep in touch with my um, family and patients. So I started writing a daily blog. I said I would do it for a month. And 
I had such an overwhelming response that I continued it through December. So I was getting comments from people really around the world. And my publisher was, was looking at the blogs and she found it so inspiring that she encouraged me to publish the second book. So this is the result of my daily blogs during the initial COVID in 2020. Wow. That, yeah. Again, that takes dedication to be able to um, go to your journal uh, and, and log in daily and be yeah. fair and open about exactly what you're feeling, not mm -hmm. just what you think the readers would like to hear, because what you were feeling is pretty much what everybody else is feeling. And you are not special with that. I mean, seriously, okay. we all needed to write it down so that um, we could look at it and see, oh my gosh, either it wasn't that bad or oh my gosh, it was so bad. And it's just a realization that we all had to come to face within the last two years. And that's, yes. you know, facing it head on, right? Yes. yes. And so many people have said, I couldn't put it in words, but when I read your book, I yes. really feel that's how I was feeling. Yeah. And that's really helped me. So, yeah, I could understand that from, from first hand. So now how, how do we recover from two years of this COVID pandemic um just take it one step at a time and let's discuss this because everyone wants to know yeah and you know especially the asian population they're like Shh, don't talk about it it's over we just move forward we go 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 no 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 not good we need to be talking about it right yes yeah, so I, I think what's crucial i call it um five minute family time every day just find a time maybe just before bedtime gather your cakey sit down just talk, each person say something, how they're feeling. And then from there, you can go on and say, okay, you know, everyone's feeling like we're not eating well. Let's let's have a family dinner together, or we feel like we're just on the screens too much. You know, let's let's get off our phones. Let's, you know, instead play board games or go for a walk after dinner. So I, I think we need to just regroup. We need to really communicate and talk with one another, see how each person is feeling. And I want parents to really listen, you know, don't just, you know, if we're gonna have this family time, let's listen patiently and respond kindly. So I think this is so important. And, you know, I think it's, it's very important for the family to express kindness and gratitude to one another. And, you know, to really make it a loving home, somewhere where people want to return and and um, regroup. Well, so um, Teresa, I'm going to just um, we have a question from one of the viewers, mm -hmm. and um, he says that we titled or you titled this show called "Moving Forward After COVID-19 Pandemic," and his question, I believe, is: Are we really out of the pandemic with the BA2 and XE mm -hmm. variants now flaring up? Should we be doing more to be to prepare for these new variants? And you know, Teresa, it's so funny. I mean, I mean that I don't know that question came out from where, but must have came out from our thoughts because isn't that the conversation we had when we were preparing uh, the the ten minutes before going online? So you address it first, and then we'll jump. I'll jump in with you. Yes, I think we should be prepared for the influenza for for really anything. Now, maybe this COVID may, may be dying down. You know, we've all had vaccines. We've all had um, the actual illness. But one of the things that the media doesn't talk about is really boosting your own immune system so that you yourself as an individual can handle um, any type of infection that will hit you. So I, I don't have a crystal ball, but if it's not COVID, it's probably going to be something else. So what I'm telling my patients and family and friends is take care of yourself, eat well, get enough sleep, you know, exercise a little bit and, and just be kind to yourself so that you have a strong immunity to fight off whatever comes in contact with you. Wow. I mean, he must have known that that question was, uh, the answer was coming because he asked that question. It was what, a, what perfect timing, but like, um, in your notes that I was reading, um, <laughs> what you rattled off is called the top five tips. Yes. And you know what? 
everyone out there listening, I mean, what Dr. Wee is saying is pretty much common sense. It's pretty much like what mommy told you, what they, we, what we all knew. But the only problem was, was the media telling us that. So Dr. Wee is telling this from her heart, from her professional practice, the basic five tips is make healthier food choices. So steward your body better, eat more plant-based, healthier foods, unprocessed, um, getting quality sleep. And that's my problem. I can say I don't, but, but since pandemic, instead of four and five, I'm getting almost six hours of sleep, which is amazing, critical for me, but I was listening to the doctor. Yes, I was exercise in the water. If you can, if you can't walk, if you can't walk in the house, walk in the house, lift things up. Right. Dr. Wee wow. join Dr. Wee on Saturday mornings. She'll give you all the tips. She'll encourage you to come back on Saturdays to walk with the doc and have some great fellowship there. Um, spend more time just being outdoors and yes. be grateful and kind to each other. Yes. Those are so simple, Dr. Wee. You know, um, and if more people would just really understand that. Yeah. And you press upon us some more and get it. So you say it from the doctor and they're, they're going to listen to you. So give it out. Give it, give it a shot, Dr. Wee. You know, um, I know it's overwhelming, but I, I tell people, you know, don't choose all five to start out. Just just think about one little area that you want to concentrate on for a few weeks. Say you're sitting on the couch all day and you don't exercise. Just decide to walk five minutes every day. Yes. And after a week, you're going to say, oh, that was duck soup. I can do <laughs> 10 minutes every day. And so now you're starting to get that that feeling that I can do this and yes. you know grab your you know your mom or dad or your kids and and do it together so that you can be accountable and right. that's what I say is start with small itty bitty goals yeah that's a good good piece of advice Dr. Wee I mean I live up here by Papakolea then uh -huh. I would walk around my block in an hour and now I'm walking to Ala Moana Shopping Center Wow. And <laughs> yeah, That's and now cool. I walk to Macaulay. My I jump in my friend's car and then we drive to Magic Island. We go twice around Magic Island, uh -huh. then all of Moana Park, and then we watch the sunset, and then we go oh. eat a vegan meal and that's every Wednesday and that's the commitment, right? Baby steps. I'm not a vegan, I can't eat vegan every day, but right. at least I know on Wednesdays I'm gonna have a pure vegan day full of exercise, sunshine, fellowship. So doctor. I'm doing your five steps. So yes, all <laughs> through baby steps, so simply and slowly. But after yeah. that, it becomes so much easier. And then you know what the question is? I can walk. Why am I driving to all Moana? Right? Yeah. 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 Especially with and so you know, with the prices of gas, you guys think about it. If you're gonna grumble about the prices of gas, then walk. Right? Yes. And and again. You know, when we're doing these things, we're getting family time. So remember, our kinky, they don't want, you know, material things. They just want us to spend some good time with them. So, you know, I, I think it's so important for us to to really, you know, make it intentional to have that family time. And, you know, before you know it, the kinkies are all grown up and, and we really want to be a very good role model for them. So, so I always tell parents, you are the authority. Mom and dad, you know, take the reins and, and be that authority, that loving authority for them. Yes. Wow. Another great piece of advice from the doctor. Parents, <laughs> you are the parents. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you need to encourage your children and guide them and discipline them towards health and towards taking their health back. Dr. Yeah. Wee can walk with you and your family, but yeah. unless you promote it and encourage it, the other six days of the week, mm -hmm. you not, may not be as successful, but you have to put the time in and just invest in them instead yeah. of taking money out of your pocket to paying doctor bills. Yeah, and that's what's gonna leave memories. That's what my kids tell me. Oh, remember when we went bike riding or swimming yes. or fishing? You know, I, I think, they, they have that and I see them doing the same things with their children and it, it just it blesses my heart to to see that you know it, it wasn't easy raising those four kids <laughs> very strong-headed but but to see them now you know really listening and understanding what Stephen and I had taught them 
And I know you had lots of love there because I remember we did an event at the park and uh -huh. they all showed up. Yeah. Now they're all <laughs> adults with kids or some with kids. I didn't know who had them, but they showed up. And to me, that's a great sign of success or that they, they, they love their mom, that they would support their mom. No matter what, they would be there because they believed you and in, in you that you were doing the right things and they wanted to continue in your footsteps. So touche, yeah. Dr. Wee, because yeah, you're, you're a great mom, um, a great doctor, a great doc to walk in the park with. And I just commend you for that. Can you just give us again the times and the location or is there another location that um, you can uh, 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 direct us to? Okay, so my weekly walk with the doc is at Central Oahu Regional Park near park near the tennis courts, and we're right there at the park. And we start at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. But we also have two other groups on Oahu, Walk with the Future Doc, the medical students and medical school faculty run that. It's every fourth Sunday at Kaka'ako Park from 9 to 10 a.m. And we have a new the Family Practice Residency Program, they meet at Blaisdell Park in Pearl City on the third Saturday monthly from 8 to 9 a.m. So we have three walking groups now on Oahu and hopefully we'll continue to grow. Wow. And yeah. so what you're trying to, you're raising up more doctors to be like-minded and to continue to. up their walk. And uh, you know what, you're in, in turn, um, tell helping them to be healthier because that's the commitment that they're making towards yes. their practice, towards their life, yes. right? I, I love mentoring the younger generation because they're our future doctors. Right, and you know, a lot of them are still single men and women uh, going into the medical profession and yes. they may meet their spouse while walking or yes. if they do and when they do, that means they're gonna start off their marriage, their families in the right direction because both of them will be walking. Mm -hmm. Thinking healthy, it's not like, Come on, honey, we're going to walk. No, you go, you go. No, we met at the park. We're going to continue. That's the one um, tradition that they would start with and continue. And what a great tradition, Dr. Wee. Yes. Wow. I'm so proud of you. Uh, your commitment is just beyond uh, I, 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 to wake up on Saturday morning, to be there, set it up and be as perky as you are and full of joy and, and admiration for each other. And that's so critical that you got them through these times and you're gonna prepare us in case anything else happens to come our way, we're ready. We're going head on with it, we're ready. So Dr. Wee, we've run out of time for today. I really wanna just mahalo you for your love, your commitment and your heart towards heading up, us, helping us get up and walking and healed especially within the last two years. I am Wendy Lowe, and we will be back in two weeks. We'll see you then. Mahalo, Dr. Wee. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.